do new job, create new job. Okay. Uh, hit F to enter a fluorine. We're using the build tool. Two fluorines. Hit O to enter an oxygen and use your mouse to draw bonds. And clean up idealized. This puts in the default bond angles for, say, sp3 hybridized oxygen. Continue. We use Molpac, and then we'll just use the first available server, which is at the top of the list. And we'll enter a useful job name here, for instance, uh, PM6 and optimization, geometry optimization. Checking the Advanced tab, we'll, we'll uh, do Preview Generate just to see what the input file looks like, and then Continue. When the job is done, click the job name and look at the results. It looks somewhat weird with a short oxygen-oxygen bond. So let's do a frequency analysis. should always do this for any optimization. Click the job name when it's done. Now if down near the bottom you'll see a table of vibrational modes. And interestingly, one of them shows a negative sign. That's a flag for a imaginary vibration. That's not a real vibration. That uh, identifies a maximum in the potential energy surface. So we need to fix that. That's, that means that this is not a, a stable shape. This is a transition state. So the way to do this is to nudge it off of the top of that curve by changing some geometric parameter, making it less symmetric, for instance, translating a fluorine. All right, now we'll do us we'll restart the optimization, do a new one. Call this op2. Okay, now that is likely to be a stable shape. It's got a, actually got about a 90 degree uh, torsion angle. This is the output file itself. The time was uh, saying was 0, 0.0 seconds. It's actually rounded off from 0 0.04 seconds, 40 milliseconds to do that optimization. It's about uh, 20 optimization steps. Molpac is very, very fast. Okay, we'll do verify on this with a, a frequency job here. Okay, it's done. Same molecule, of course. The geometry hasn't changed. Now we see all real vibrations, which is characteristic of a stable state. The lowest frequency is a torsional twisting, but that indeed is a real peak. Now here's another one, for instance. Here's the oxygen-oxygen stretching frequency, higher frequency. These can all be seen on the infrared spectrum, and so you just hit the IR spectrum there. There are the different peaks. Okay, lastly, let's look at some uh, surfaces of this molecule. And to do that, you, you uh, do a, a molecular orbitals calculation, because all these depend on the 
population of the molecular orbitals. And again, going down near the bottom, you see of the results table, you see various things here. For instance, electron density. This is essentially the sum of the filled molecular orbitals. Distribution in space. You can change some of the parameters here. For instance, on isosurface, this is a density isosurface. Uh, we'll make that uh, 0.01 electrons per cubic angstrom. And you'll see it swells up a little bit. That's further away from the nuclei. Electrostatic potential will paint the charge, the relative charges on that density surface. Red is electron rich, blue is electron poor. And we can look at molecular orbitals. Let's look at the highest occupied MO which appears to be a sort of two sigma bonds. And look at another MO with filled here. This looks like a uh, P orbitals on the oxygens, mainly. In an antibonding MO, this looks like it's the oxygen-oxygen sigma star bond, antibond. Okay, we're done. We'll log out.